Hi friends! Today I am starting a project that I had not planned on doing this year, but that I am very excited for. Are you excited too? Are you excited too? The walkaway dress. We all know it. We all love it. We all somehow also kind of hate it. Very soon after starting vintage sewing, I found the walkaway dress and immediately wanted to make it. Very soon after that, however, I discovered just how not great the reproduction pattern is. There are many, 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 many scathing reviews online about how bad the reproduction is, and you cannot find the original for cheap at all, anywhere. So as much as I loved the idea of the walkaway dress, I kind of decided to put it away for later and maybe one day it would happen. Until, if you are a vintage sewing enthusiast, or even if you're not, and you're just into sewing in general, you have probably heard of Stephanie Canada. If you haven't, definitely check out her channel. She is hilarious and has amazing content, mostly about vintage patterns. She has issued a challenge. And I am accepting that challenge. She has an original copy of the walkaway dress. She put out this challenge and said, if you make the walkaway dress, time yourself making it, try to do it as quickly as you can to actually walk away for lunch in it, I will send you the pattern. So that's what we're doing. I sent her an email, I got the pattern back so quickly and I am so excited. Now, the pattern is not in my size, so I will have to grade it up. Um, but in her challenge rules, she's kind of laid out what you're supposed to time and what you're not. So today I will be preparing my fabric, I will be grading up the pattern, and I will also be making my bias tape because I'm going to make some from fabric I have in my stash instead of purchasing pre-made. And then tomorrow, after I drop my kiddo off at school and have my coffee, I really have a deadline for this because I have to finish it before I have to go get my kids. You are so fluffy, you're shedding like crazy. There's cat hair everywhere. Everywhere. Immediately after getting back from dropping my kiddo off at school tomorrow, I'm going to drink my coffee and then start the timer and start cutting this fabric. We all know that I work best with a little bit of chaos sewing and a deadline, so I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Without talking too much about a relatively simple concept, let's get into it. Look at her, she's so cute. I printed and put together the pattern. It took me about 50 pieces of paper because I also cut out the instructions here, and it took me about one and a half rolls of clear tape. Um, so this was sent to me by Stephanie, but this version was a cleanup by Sewing Silly, and I gotta tell you, it was real nice because when printing at 100% size, I didn't have to cut any of the margins. So that was awesome. Thank you so, so, so much. Saved me a ton of time. Pulling fabric from my stash, I have these two sheets. One's a flat sheet, one's a fitted sheet. Um, I got them for free, actually, um, from like a Facebook Marketplace giveaway. Um, I have this red fabric left over from another project. It's just cotton. I think I have about a yard left, but that'll be plenty to make the bias binding. Um, so I'm gonna give these a wash. And I thought these were perfect because I can try and recreate kind of the original pattern image. I thought that would be super cute. And then this could be a part of my seam sketchy series. Yeah, I just, I love making things look as close to original pattern art as I can. I'm going to throw these in the wash and then get started on altering my pattern to fit me. Now that these are washed, I'm going to take the fitted sheet and cut open the edges and take out the elastic so that it will lay flat and I'm hoping actually that I will be able to save some of this elastic and use it for what the pattern calls for to go in the back. Well already that's a bust. Um, the elastic is sewn in and taking it out would take a ton of time so I'm just going to cut it and I did luckily have some elastic in my stash so I will use this. I've done a couple other things to help prep for the challenge. I've switched out my serger color to white because that's how I plan to finish the shoulder seams and not having to change it 
later is going to be helpful. I've also gathered up all the stuff that I will be using to make the dress other than the fabric. So I've got my elastic, my little covered buttons, my hook and eyes, <laughs> this absolutely absurd amount of bias tape. Like, I feel like I must have measured wrong. There is no way I need this much, but better too much than too little, I guess. And then I didn't love the idea of the super thick half inch bias tape for the buttons, so I did just make this smaller bit for the front to make the loops. Good morning, or good afternoon. My errands this morning took a lot longer than I thought they were going to, and now it is past noon. So this is no longer gonna be a make it in the morning and walk away with it for lunch dress. It's going to be a make it in the afternoon and walk away for dinner dress, <laughs> hopefully. So after we do our little chat here, I will start the clock and see what time it is. And I'm really excited, I, I'm so excited. But I figured before I get started, I'm going to drink some tea and I have my instructions here all printed out. So I'm going to do one last read through of the instructions so that I actually know what I'm doing because right now I don't. Um, and then yeah, I think everything is ready to go. So I'm very excited. I do really have a deadline for this because I do have to go pick up my kids from school, you know, at 3.30, so. All right, if I don't finish it before then, it's not happening today. All right, I will check in with you soon. Starting out, I will say I was surprised by how long this pattern took to cut out. I thought it would go faster because it's not that many pattern pieces, but the skirt was too big to use my rotary cutter, and so I had to cut it by hand, and then just transferring all the markings took a while. Once the markings were on though, especially the front went very quickly, really just pinning in the darts and sewing them. There was a bit of fussiness with a spot you need to clip, but it wasn't too hard to figure out. I used my serger to finish the waist and shoulder seams and I felt that made it look very clean on the inside. At this point I did a try on just to make sure it was sort of right, um, but only a very very quick one because I did have the time running, but obviously I was very excited. Sewing the binding on was pretty straightforward. There are not too many tricky curves in this pattern. Wherever there were corners I metered them like the pattern suggests and I thought they all turned out really nice. This is the smaller piece of the binding that I made to use for the button loops, and I'm really glad that I did this. I feel that the smaller size just makes it feel a bit more elegant and a bit more thought through. So here you can see me marking the size of my buttons and where I would need to sew everything together. I just made these little loops, making them all face the same direction, and I made it one continuous piece. It just seemed more stable to me that way. Um, so I did stop the time because, um, uh, because I, I don't even think it's on the frame. Um, this is absurdly long on me. I forgot to take into consideration the fact that I am a very short little hobbit lady, um, when I adjusted my pattern. So I didn't cut any of the length off and I really, really should have. So I stopped the time. I'm going to mark where... I want to bring this up to and cut it and then I will restart the time to do the hem and then I need to do the buttons and the hooks. There's a pin digging into my back. Um, so yeah. I took it up a whole seven inches. That's bananas. I'm so short. Okay, so 
I will start my timer and get back to it. I'm so close. I'm so excited. Here you can see me marking my button placement, and now that I'm thinking about it, I don't think I ever actually steamed out those marks, so they're probably still on my dress. But I really love this closure. I think it's just a nifty way to close a dress and very charming. These super cute fabric covered buttons are actually from another project that I've recently finished that you will be seeing on this channel very soon. I had another dress that I needed to refashion and it had these buttons I needed to remove and they just happened to work out perfectly. They're so cute. I hate this needle so much. It's way too short to be comfortable, but it was the only one I could find and I didn't want to spend a ton of time looking for another one when I am this close to being done. So I'm just sucking it up and living with it. <laughs> ah, what am I doing? Oh no, oh no. <laughs> okay, um, so I'm going to go eat some lunch because I'm kind of hungry and I'm going to make my hair look cuter and put some makeup on for the review. But it's done! <sighs> wow, that went so fast. What a marathon. So, like, there's marathon sewing and then there's that. <laughs> My official time for anyone keeping track is two hours and 26 minutes. And here she is. I love it. I love it. Um, I do have a few notes on it for anybody who's thinking about making their own. To my pattern, I added some width to the shoulders, which I do really like, um, but I also added length. And first of all, I should not have done that, but I also should have been like actively taking away length. So there's that because you know like this definitely fits better than this and i will probably make that adjustment to future versions um definitely mark it on the pattern i'm not sure i'm going to adjust this one i'll wear this one a few times see if i'm comfortable with that as is if i find myself fussing with it too much i may alter it but um for now i love it and it's fine and i will be marking the pattern for future versions because i will definitely be making more. I see the hype about this pattern. I see why people are so in love with it. Other than that, I am surprised at how well it fits me. The darts in the front just makes this really great shaping and I'm really happy with it. This one is a little long in the back because the shoulders are too long, but not too much of a problem. I still really like it. Not too shabby for a completely free dress. Free fabric, free binding, free pattern. Love it. It does absolutely need to be worn over a petticoat. First for the floof, um, because that does give it, you know, the pizzazz. But also, you know, if it's a windy day, you don't want to be accidentally flashing anybody. So petticoats, highly recommended for this dress. I am so shocked with how quickly this came together. It is 
for real, a walk away dress. You could walk away in it for lunch or whatever you need to go to. This pattern eats fabric like nobody's business. It took so much fabric. It has this full skirt, but then also like a second skirt in the front. So it's twice the fabric, but oh my goodness, is it a great dress. I think it's worth it completely. I would just do a mock-up out of something cheaper like muslin or a sheet or something before you use a really nice fabric but 100% recommend. I I love it. I'm in love with it. I'm going to make a bajillion more. So yeah, I am beyond happy with this make. I, it was not a project I was planning to do, but I'm really, really glad I did. So thank you, Stephanie. Again, if you haven't checked out her channel, it's here on YouTube, Stephanie Canada. She also has Instagram and TikTok and all those other things. I will link them below. And... I will see you next time. Bye friends. Oh, one last thing that I forgot to record while this was on my tripod. I would either do five buttons instead of three or spread them out because I did all three super close together and it just doesn't come quite to the seam. So five close together or three spread out is what I would recommend. Can you stop showing your butt to the camera?